Hi Moglets. I wanted to revisit Ayato for a couple of reasons. Halfway because I just like playing with him, but I don't feel like I get enough opportunity to. And the other half is because we uh, finally got his quote unquote signature set, Echoes of an Offering, to a decent standard. It's not perfect by any means, but it's solid. When he first came out, I was hearing that this set isn't necessarily like the end all be all best set. It potentially can be, but it's RNG. So let's go over that real quick. When normal attacks hit opponents, there's a 36% chance that it will trigger Valley Right, which will increase normal attack damage by 70% of attack. And since this effect gets dispelled pretty much instantly, 0.05 seconds, it's only good for one attack. And every time you fail to get Valley Right, the odds increase by 20% that it actually procs. It can also occur every 0.2 seconds, so while you, you know, do his E and start slashing, the time in between those slashes is surely longer than 0.2 seconds so you don't need to worry about that either worst case scenario is that it'll take you five strikes to get valley right and then the next one so on the sixth hit you will take advantage of it and have this boosted normal attack but yeah that's echoes of an offering he does deal most of his damage via normal attacks and this is purely focused on that that being said we also have heart of depth here which increases normal and charge attack damage by 30 percent in addition to giving him a 15 percent hydro damage bonus and then we also have gladiator which boosts normal attack damage by 35 percent Although this is just an attack increase and not a hydro damage. So, so I'd say it's a toss up between Heart of Depth and Echoes of an Offering. For me personally though, I, I like the idea of Echoes of an Offering. RNG can be really frustrating, but when it's a part of actual gameplay, it can also be pretty fun. Let's take a look at his stats, see if there's something we need to uh, change or make better. Uh, currently, I think his stats are pretty good. We have 86 crit rate to 149 crit damage. Would prefer a little more crit damage, but it's fine. 58 Hydro. He also does get a bonus based on max HP. I didn't really want to focus on HP too much, but I accepted it when it was a stat. Like here we have 18%. So yeah, he has nearly 23,000. In terms of team, I kind of want Ayaka in there. Me and Bones were doing a uh, domain the other day and... I had Ayato, she had Ayaka, it actually was really nice. I'm not sure exactly how this team is going to work out, I just kind of want to start with it. Ayaka is kind of in Blizzard Strayer. I don't know if she's going to be able to get a lot of freezes with Shondling melting everything all the time, but uh, first though, how about some solo Ayato? Uh, I know that's not going to be as good because he has Haran and that relies on teammates doing their skills, but uh, Jesus Christ, they all just got completely obliterated. Oh, what the hell killed him? That was weird. I have no idea what killed him so fast. Fast. Might throw up a replay if it's interesting enough. All right, let's check out these guys. I love his AOE too. It's like you get the best of both worlds because usually AOE is pretty weak. But dang, yeah, he just shreds and he is completely solo right now. Also, we need to change those wings. I guess I never got around to doing that. I don't know. Those look pretty good. Yeah, I think I'll stick with these. Don't think there are any that fit him super perfectly, but I think when I did my original showcase, I was mainly showcasing him in an electro charge team or taser. And that worked out really well in certain situations where there is, you know, a lot of enemies, because he himself has a lot of AoE, Electro Charge has a lot of AoE, so it goes well together. I do actually want to see what this normal attack boost is on his uh, four-piece set. I don't know if it'll give us any, like, visual indication either. So we're getting, like, a 4200 basic here. 4263. A 2000. The 4000s aren't the... aren't the boosted ones, are they? That's over double damage. 4263. 2058. Most of our attacks are this 4263 though, but I guess it is kind of a flat increase because it's based on his attack. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that is purely his artifact set in play here because we're not doing anything else. A difference of 2200 damage. That's pretty crazy, but I do want to see how it affects his actual E skills. That's going to be a little harder though because he is continually getting extra damage from these uh, Namisen stacks. He can only have four of them, so we should be able to see some difference there. And also, I guess what I said about, you know, worst case best case scenario because it seems like the boosted normal attack after you get valley right can also apply valley right so you can potentially get consecutive valley right strikes uh and that's good to know here we go all right eight 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 five so the eight fives wow that is a big difference though the eight fives must be uh with valley right and the five thousand whatevers must be without we're gonna try that again we're using no other character here so 6,000, 5,000, 5,000, 8,000, 8,000, 5,000. Wow. That is a pretty substantial difference. I want to know if the difference is going to be smaller with like a Binny boost or something. So let's go ahead and try that now. 13 to 7. The difference actually seems bigger. 
Well, it's a little hard to see because the numbers are changing all the time. And of course, now he's going to have a different boost from Haran Gapaku because we're doing uh, skills with Vinny here. But we should still be able to see the difference in value right here. So let's just wait till he does another skill here. We only have 20 seconds, so we got to be a little quick. All right. Uh, 15. And we're getting some tins. So it's maybe like 10 to 15. 10k without Valley Right, 15 with Valley Right. So unlike just doing the first hit of his basic attacks and comparing those where it was over double with Valley Right, now it's more like a 50% increase uh, when we, you know, have some boosts going on and we're, and we're doing his, you know, elemental skill, which that's what you should be doing anyway. Still an incredibly big boost. And it seems like around half at least do have this bonus. All right, here we go again. Yeah, the 16 and 14. I think those are with Valley Right and the 10Ks are without. Let's go ahead and try the full team now with with Sean Ling. And uh, let's go ahead and get his uh, burst in there as well. Yeah, I just saw a 34K, but I couldn't see much because he died very quick. I kind of want to swap into Heart of Depth, even though it's not going to be a very good one-to-one -one comparison because the subsets are going to be different. Uh, but we'll make it kind of as close as possible. Right now we're getting roughly 10K with a normal strike and a... And 15 to 16 K with a value right strike. So I would expect, you know, at least 12, 13, maybe up to 14 K consistent heart of depth strikes. Uh, but we'll see. Quick mental note of his attributes, 23K HP, 2300 attack. The crit damage is the only thing that's really important here at 149, or I guess just 150 to round up. He will have more hydro damage bonus because of the two piece, but can't really do anything about that. Well, we did lose about 300 attack, but we gained some HP for those stacks. And I believe we have a little bit more crit damage, almost the same crit rate, and more Hydro damage bonus. I think overall he's a little bit weaker, but it's decently close. It shouldn't be too far off, really. So we're going to do more or less the same thing we did before. Stay with Benny for a yes. while, doing some skills, getting his burst back. Give it a try here. So we're getting 12k uh, pretty consistently, 10 to 12. I mean, yeah, the multipliers are slightly different. It goes from 90 to 110. Still getting between 10 and 12, where before we were getting between 10 and 15. So it would be hard for me to say that Heart of Depth is like on par. And that is, of course, taking into consideration that his stats are slightly worse. If we were getting even like 11k base strikes, if the third one was going up to at least 13, 14. So let me see here. 10 to 12. Yeah, you can actually see it going up. It's like 10, 11, 12. With Echoes of an Offering, it's a lot more all over the place, depending on if he has the uh, Valley Right boost or not. Yeah, it seems like 12, 7 is the most he can have. And the lowest strike is a 10k. Well, I tinkered around a bit. It's hard to get his attack back up to 2300 because Echoes of an Offering gives him 18%. But I got him up to 2132, and his current rate is now 171, which is significantly higher than it was before. He also still has the Hydro bonus, so I'm giving him, like, every chance here. I would say his stats are now actually quite a bit better than with the other set. So, let's see what happens now. When he crits, I would hope to see at least minimum, like, t like 11 5 If we can't get that with superior stats, then I would have to give the win to Echoes here. Alright, here we go. 11 8. 11 8 is the minimum. Okay. Well, on average, we might have a little bit more damage than with Echoes now, but I would say that's mostly down to having better stats. So, yeah, let's see here. Uh, 11 8 minimum, 13 9 maximum. Seems like this whole video is just going to be testing. Let's go ahead and give him his setback. All right, let's give it another look see here. So yeah, it's now 10 to 15. I was definitely noticing this time more 10s than 15s. So you can always have bad luck where it just doesn't work out, of course, and that's the disadvantage. Let's check that out again. Yeah, a lot of non-boosted ones now. So in a nutshell, Echoes has a higher potential damage and Heart of Depth is more consistent. Because again, they seem very similar damage-wise. But all right, enough science. Let's actually go ahead and play something. Start with Benny Boost, Shanling, Ayato. Gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and see what we can do here, I suppose. Uh, I guess I'm just going to start with uh, Ayato's burst here instead of... Uh, doing his ease so we can do some Ayaka stuff here. But now we can go ahead and swap to Ayato and do some of his, although we don't really have anything else going on now. Yeah, now she's doing the, the tornado stuff, so I gotta be a little careful. Yeah, everyone's kind of almost dead, but <laughs> she was super annoying with those last uh, five HP she had. Wow, okay, whatever. Yeah, I think Ayaka is better suited to Ayato if you're mainly using Ayato for his burst. I'm gonna try without Ayaka and 
kind of see what really what goes on here. I really like to have Zhongli for Rock Frog anyway. Uh, oh, whoops. Yeah, I kind of forgot Rock Frog goes into his phases pretty fast. And now he's in Hydro State, so I imagine we're not gonna get as good results here. And I can't really even risk swapping to Zhongli to get a new shield here because uh, <laughs> he has 50 HP. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> there wasn't much to see there. I've been trying to see how sort of uh, Shanling and Ayato interact in the in the uh, reaction department, but it's a little bit hard. Guess we can always just check it out in Abyss here. Uh, can one of you guys survive for a sec? I know we do have some bigger enemies here. Ah, oh, yeah, there he is. All right, Let's give it a little look. See here. I, yeah, I think it's Shanling's uh, Pyronado doing the uh, vaporizing, and that always seems to be the case when it comes to vaporize. But I wouldn't say that's a bad combo anyway. My Shanling like isn't built super well, and I was still seeing some like 35k hits from her Pyronado. So I don't think that's too bad, and Ayato himself is still doing good damage even without vaporize. That just seems to be what it is with Hydros. It's a lot more work to get their attacks to vaporize. So yeah, I guess that'll pretty much do it. Uh, this was essentially just an excuse to use Ayato, I suppose. He's such a good unit, I just, I don't know, I never find a place for him in my teams. Kinda turned out to be more of just like an artifact comparison, I guess, but uh... Whatever. Make sure to tell me anything in the comments down below. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks. As always for watching, and until next time.